So the wedding's counting down. And what should hit the papers? Oh, some photos of Father Marco doing all kinds of weird stagey things in a clear bid to work with photographers to make himself look better. And Kanoff alerted Megan. And she called her father. She asked if he had cooperated with a photographer. I mean, it was pretty obvious he had. Unless the photographer was like just his friend and then his friend stumbled and dropped his phone right into the hands of a newspaper editor and lo and behold, there were the photos. I mean, the fact that Thomas thought he could deny having worked with a photographer, pretty audacious. At Megan's request, the palace officially denied that Thomas Markle had cooperated with Rayner. Everyone, it was pretty obvious that he had, but the palace was also eager to sweep this story under the rug. Thomas Markle, said Knopf, was suffering from media intrusion. Being followed and harassed by photographers, he warned that media to respect Markle's privacy and to stop further harassment. And everyone believed Knopf's denial. I mean, why shouldn't they? It, the pictures did look kind of stagey and hokey-pokey, but at the same time, if the, if the palace is going to say it didn't happen, we'll just go with that. On May 3rd, two weeks before the wedding, Thomas Markle drove to a first aid station with chest pains. Years earlier, he'd received nitroglycerin treatment for irregular heartbeats, and paramedics told him he was in the midst of a heart attack, and he should go immediately to the local hospital. This is the first of several situations having to do with his health. He's not well. I mean, look at the band. Does he look well to you? He goes to the hospital. Uh, after a few hours of poor care and despite suspected congestive heart failure, he discharged himself. He didn't want to stay there. And I think that he was in denial about how poor his health really was. Over the following days, he told Megan about his health problems. He also told her how much he was looking forward to wearing his new suit and shoes and that during a trip to Los Angeles, he had left flowers at Doria's house for Mother's Day. So they're in communication. Plans to go to the wedding are still in full swing, as far as he knows. By now, Rayner was selling the photographs across the world, and he was expecting to earn over $100,000. One photo was published by The Sun as an exclusive. Okay, now buckle up, you guys, because this is where Harry decides to just be a complete and total drama queen, and I just cannot even understand what in the world. I mean, when I tell you that this man is just completely and totally emotionally irregulated, listen to this whopper. I don't know what drugs he was on when he said this, but... On May 11th, Harry and Meghan call Thomas Markle, you know, strength together, I guess. And they call him, and during the conversation, they asked if he did cooperate with Rayner. I mean, it just seems so obvious that he had. No, said Thomas. If you're lying to me, said Harry, my children's life will be in danger. What? are you talking about? And that's exactly Thomas Markle's reaction. What are you talking about? Shouted Thomas, angered by Harry's tirade. You haven't got any children. <laughs> My children's life will be in danger. What are you even talking? Like, literally, what are you talking about, Harry? Just screaming random things, trying to sound so dramatic, trying to just whip up emotion. My children's life will be in danger. What? This is what I'm talking about when I tell you that Harry is only happy if he's upset or sad. If he's, if he's not one of those things, then he just doesn't feel alive. What are these sentences falling out of his mouth? My children's life are going to be in danger. The kids you don't have? Or the kids you're planning to have with a surrogate? I don't know. Take your pick. On May 11th, Thomas also texted Megan. He says in this text, I know your hard work to make me look good. Thank you. I'm getting excited. It's all so close now, and I can't wait to walk you down the aisle. So Thomas is working to stay in Meghan and Harry's good graces. He knows that they're agitated with him. They feel like he's this thing they have to manage, and you can sense that there's embarrassment. It would be really humiliating to feel like your adult daughter found you to be a problem. The Markles' lives permanently changed on Sunday, May 13th. The mail on Sunday exposed Thomas Markle's complicity with Jeff Rayner. A grainy CCTV image recorded outside the Mexican Internet Cafe showed Thomas following Rayner holding a long lensed camera. Other informants, including David Flores the Taylor, confirmed that Thomas Markle had collaborated with Rayner. Well, the palace was understandably incredibly embarrassed. 
But Megan and Harry were furious about the betrayal. Megan repeated calls to her father were unanswered. Mortified by her inability to tell the palace officials what was happening, she blamed the media as irresponsible, harmful, ruthless, and malevolent. She asserted that the Mail on Sunday had known about the collaboration for some time and had maliciously waited until the last moment to expose her father. But that wasn't true. On May 14th, Thomas woke late as usual around 11 a.m., which was 7 p.m. in London. Thomas texted his daughter that he was sorry about all this. He loved her, and he offered to make a public apology to both her and Prince Harry, and he also said that to spare the family any more embarrassment, he would just not go to the wedding. I think he should not have put that red meat in front of Meghan's nose, but he agreed to bow out. Well, Harry said, don't even with this apology business. Just don't say anything else. We can't trust you to go out and say anything, and that would just make it worse, so don't. And... Thomas said, all right, well, I won't make an apology, but then I will come to the wedding then. If if you just want to sweep this under the rug and just hopefully move on and not make it continue to be a story in the news, then I won't make the apology. I'll come as normal and we can just progress and hopefully everything will be okay. But then soon after that conversation, Jason Kanoff calls Thomas. Jason says, actually, you do need to apologize. This looked pretty bad and we're going to need you to come out and say you're sorry about it. Trapped in his home in Mexico, Thomas had no one to guide him, no one to help him figure out exactly how to make this apology, and his frustration just began to fester. Nobody seemed to want to take the time to imagine what Thomas's life was like right now. They just kind of wanted to manage him from afar, but nobody was thinking about his humanity and how this would be for him and how he was feeling alone by himself in a little Mexican village, just feeling like he had no one and feeling like his life had completely changed. And like I said at the beginning, what to what benefit had it changed? I think anybody can manage a difficult scenario for a while, for longer than you'd even imagine, if there's some reason for doing it. But he is being shoved to the side and ignored. For what end? It feels like every minute he's losing more and more of his relationship with his daughter. He's not gaining anything by obeying what she says to do. Well, Thomas insisted that Kanoff's second call about the apology was his last, and that Kanoff never spoke to him again, and that when he tried to reach out with the number that had been given him, he was never answered and nobody cared. He felt that not only was he abandoned, but now he was utterly humiliated. That lunchtime, he drove to a local McDonald's in Mexico, and then after that meal, he headed to a KFC. So he's eating away his feelings. Um, which probably had something to do with the fact that on May 14th, he started having those chest pains again. See, he's not taking care of himself. And this is what I'm saying. I think Thomas is living in a bit of a denial about a lot of things, about the reality of a lot of things. I think it's a lot of time to, by himself, to imagine that things are one way when they're really another. I think he has no one to help him, nobody to bounce ideas off of, nobody to discuss the truth with. I mean, I guess he's got Samantha, but... I mean, is Samantha really going to lead him to a, an elevated mindset about any of this? So he starts to have those chest pains again. And it was very similar to that other heart attack that he had. So he asked a friend to drive him across the border to Chula Vista Hospital in California. And while he was waiting, his phone rang. Well, a man called Sarge announced that he was going to be arriving soon to Thomas's house to take him to a Los Angeles airport. And that Thomas was going to fly out in two days. Okay, you guys, let's, let, let's look at this timeline. The last time Megan and Harry had a conversation with Thomas, they had told him that everyone was still planning that he'd come to the wedding after they said, you don't have to apologize. Thomas said, okay, I'll come to the wedding anyway. They said, we're going to have somebody come pick you up at your house. Okay. I don't understand why nobody told him when that was going to happen. Like, okay, on this time at this day, somebody will come pick you up. Anyway, he's in the hospital. He, if he had known when somebody was coming, it seems like he would have called those people and said, hey, I'm going to the hospital, you know, but instead he gets a phone call, uh, from this stranger named Sarge who says, hey, I'm on my way to your house to pick you up. It's like, it seems like it was out of the blue that this person showed up. Also, why is somebody coming to pick him up from his house to take him to Los Angeles so he can fly out in two days? It doesn't take two days to, to drive from his little place in Mexico to Los Angeles. 
So what? what's he just going to be hanging out for a couple of days before he flies out? Like that doesn't, what kind of, I don't understand that timeline either. So I don't understand why they couldn't have been like, okay, let's see how things go at the hospital, but you can still make your flight. I mean, it wasn't going to be for like another two days. I do not understand what in the world is happening here. This seems really jacked up and like nobody knew what was going on. It seems wild to me that you'd be in the hospital and then the driver calls you and was like, hey, I'm at your house to come pick you up. And Thomas had no way to let that person know, hey, I'm, I'm going to the hospital. Or even that he, he seemed shocked to have gotten the call in the first place. He seemed to not even know. What, Megan was just like, dad, you have to be ready whenever somebody shows up? What is this? Okay, well, so he says, uh, Sarge calls him and says, I'm coming to your house and to pick you up. Sorry, replied Thomas. I've got to cancel. I have to go to the hospital. I'll pass it on, said Sarge. Thank you very much. Before going to the hospital, Thomas spoke to TMZ, an American showbiz website. He confirmed that he had cooperated with Rayner in rehabilitating his image. But he'd been left looking stupid and hammy, and so he wouldn't be flying to London. Contrary to Megan's later claim, he did not personally refuse to go into a waiting car to drive to the airport, nor had he turned away a security guard sent by the British Embassy. Both arrived after Thomas had crossed the border. Before entering the hospital, he texted Megan to apologize and say that he would not travel to London. Okay, so we're getting a lot of weird stories here. I mean, you guys, what kind of drama is this? All right, so there he is having a heart attack in the hospital. Apparently before he went in, his I, I, maybe that was his attempt at an apology when he contacted TMZ. Because the first time I read this chapter, I'm like, why is he talking to TMZ? Doesn't he realize that talking to these people was his downfall in the first place? But maybe that was his attempt to get his apology out there. So that's him saying, I, I screwed up. I looked like a fool. I thought I could help myself. I made it worse. And then he says, because of that, he's not flying to London. But he'd already just agreed with Harry that he would fly. So he knows he's going into the hospital. Was that just him not wanting to give the whole world all of his medical business? So he said, I'm not flying because I screwed up. And so I can't go. I'm assuming that the reason he said I can't go is because he was headed to the hospital and he just didn't want to let TMZ know all of his business. But if he wants to make it look like he and, and Megan have a good relationship, it would it's weird that he would not try to make it sound like I messed up, but Megan understands that I was just embarrassed by my image and I'm still really looking forward to going to the wedding. He's actually in the hospital for real, regardless of what Megan wants to think. And the thing to TMZ, appear, apparently that was his apology. Um, but Megan, I mean, I I can't believe the way she's trying to, has to spin things to make her dad look even worse than he did before by later telling everybody, my dad completely abandoned me on my exciting day. He took some stupid pictures and then because he was embarrassed he wouldn't come I even sent a car around and he just refused it but it's like well he did refuse it but he was going to the hospital so she truly didn't believe he he was there because she she's made up this whole story about how he could have come but he didn't come he could not have come he was having a heart attack and having heart surgery okay well she wants everyone to think that she has been victimized by her heartless father Meantime, Harry and Meghan were frantic. In a series of texts to Thomas Markle, the prince was on the edge. It's a really long text. I won't bother to read the whole thing to you because it's just him saying the same thing over and over and over again. But it's just him saying, you know, if you love Meg, you would come. Please make, like, answer our calls. Why won't you pick up? We're not mad. You, we're not angry. We just want to speak to you. Um, and it's weird because he calls Tom, Thomas tom the whole time i don't know if he'd been given permission to do that but it seems really the whole message is condescending and oh any speaking to the press will backfire trust me tom you know we've been trying to call you we don't know why you won't pick up so the there's an eight hour time difference he's in the hospital as you can imagine communication probably isn't super precise because of those two factors well megan says that she woke up to read tmz's report of her father's heart attack and hospitalization 
And she would later claim that this was when she time learned of Thomas Markle's condition. What kind of term is time learned? That scenario is hard to believe because both Sarge and the British embassy security guard who'd been sent to Thomas Markle's house were told he was going to the hospital. And Megan had received Thomas's text with the same news. So how is it that she's like, I only learned about my father's condition from a report on TMZ. As you can imagine, it was devastating to find out that way and that my father hadn't even had the common decency to tell me. All right. Well, now we get into some of the most super passive aggressive texts you've ever heard in your life, dripping with condescension and clearly denying the reality that her father was in the hospital. Megan texted her father um, because she doubted that this hospitalization was genuine. She thought it was just some dumb lie because he was humiliated about the photos and just didn't want to come out anymore. She says, I've been reaching out to you all weekend, but you're not taking any of our calls or replying to any texts. Very concerned about your health and safety and have taken every measure to protect you, but not sure what more we can do if you don't respond. Do you need help? Can we send the security team down again? I'm very sorry to hear you're in the hospital, but I need you to please get in touch with us. What hospital are you at? So just dripping with condescension, passive aggression. And what is this? Do we need to send the security team down? Okay, you sent one security guard from the British embassy. Okay, what is the security team? Stop trying to act like you're moving heaven and earth for your dad when you couldn't care less about him. 10 minutes later, Megan fired off another message about security. Harry and I made a decision earlier today and we are dispatching the same security guys that you turned away this weekend to be a presence on the ground to make sure that you're safe. All of this is incredibly concerning, but your health is most important. Oh, thanks for letting me know that uh, my heart attack matters to you. I mean, if I were Thomas Markle, I would just be like, I would just turn my phone off and be like, whatever, I'm not going to this stupid wedding. They didn't want me anyway, and I need to get well. So uh, this drama is not going to help me heal, and I'm, I'm done with this. Can you imagine the pressure and the tension of all of this going on in the midst of having a heart attack? She's trying to kill him. Then she adds, please, please call as soon as you can. Well, he's in surgery, so you might want to just not hold your breath. And it is odd that she would bother to send a security guard to Thomas Markle in Mexico while he's trying to prepare for surgery in California. I mean, why are you sending the security team, which is where she sent it, down to his house? Well, because she didn't think he was really in the hospital. So she sends the security team down to his house and a blatant, you know, middle finger to his story that he was in the hospital. For 18 months, Thomas had been forlornly asking for help. And now when he's not even home, she decides to send a security guard. What in the world? This is beyond anything I could have ever comprehended. In an emergency procedure to prevent a heart attack on, the, on May 16th, two of Markle's arteries were unblocked by angioplasty. Emerging from the anesthetic later, Thomas Markle texted Megan. Surgery went okay, but the heart attack did do some damage. The doctors he continued forbade him to fly that day to London. He wished her the best. Love you and wish that you the best of everything. And then Harry texts this back. Okay, you guys, literally, he just got out of surgery. He literally just said, I love you. I wish I could fly. The doctors have told me I cannot fly out today as planned. This is Harry's response. If you had listened to me, this would never have happened. <laughs> He's as bad as she is. I mean, you know what? Those two deserve each other. Those two deserve each other. The only response, two things are happening here. Either they are just completely hateful and evil people or... They didn't believe that he had really gone to surgery and they thought that this was just some ploy to cover up for his embarrassment over the photos. How could you, how could you think your dad would do that? I mean, what has he ever, what has Thomas Markle ever done in Megan's life that would make him think that she, he would not show up for her if he was at all able to do so? He's never denied her. The only time he's ever not done what she asked was when he... She kept wanting him to go to Toronto and he couldn't afford to do it. But up until that point, he had always done everything and given her everything that she could possibly want. If he was able to do something for her, he was going to do it. 
Stung by Harry's reprimand and silenced about his health, Thomas considered his position. In a text, he asked Megan, who would give her away? If really required, he texted, I'll come if you really need me. I'm sorry about this. But then TMZ reported that after all, Thomas had decided to fly to Britain. So I don't know where they got that tidbit unless Thomas had called and said, oh, I think I will go. I don't know how he thought he was going to make it to the wedding on time. And also his doctors had said, don't fly. He just had heart surgery. Are you kidding me right now? How in the world did he really think he could go? He needs to stop worrying about what these two clowns think and just he needs to go live his life. From London, Harry sent texts saying that they were not angry. Uh, seems like you might be, though, Has, with this, if you'd listen to me, this would never have happened. I mean, I'm not angry or anything, but you're a buffoon. 